Hi, we have another package. Uh, no, it's not from Russia this time. It is from Ukraine. And what is it? Well, it is vacuum tubes. More. What kind of vacuum tubes could we need now? Well, you've guessed it. It is for the Nixie Tube project. But uh, these aren't exactly more Nixie tubes. So let's get it open and see what it is. Okay, I think I got it here. Let's open it up. What is it? What is it? It's tiny. It is... Get it in the camera view here. Zoom in. IN3. It's uh, not really a tube per se. It's more of a neon bulb. And what this is used for is back in the day when Nixie tubes were uh, popular, when they were still in vogue, uh, these were used as decimal places. Uh, so I figure I don't have a data sheet for these things, but I wanted to make a quick video to uh, just put it on the power supply, see what kind of resistor it might need. I'm thinking I'm going to want to drive it with some kind of transistor. So uh, we'll just do a bit of characterization and testing and see what it takes to drive one of these things. I was actually under the impression from uh, the eBay seller that I bought only three of these things and it's clear uh, we've got several. We've got the two here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these things. Uh, so yeah, that's a little unusual. Uh, I'm guessing what happened is he got a whole box of these things, probably not fully knowing what they are and whether they work or not. And, yeah, because he's sending it to the United States, he wanted to be fairly certain at least three of them were going to work, so he hedged his bets and he just sent me eight of them. Uh, or maybe he was being generous, but, uh, hmm, yeah, I kind of doubt it. Anyway, another interesting thing is that we have two different types. Uh, there's four of each. We've got this uh, kind of cylindrical one here and uh, this other one here on the left. Uh, and they seem fundamentally different. I don't know exactly how they differ, but you can even see down here by the leads, uh, you know, the packaging is done differently. So, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what the differences are, but we'll test both and see how each of them perform. All right, this may end up being pure torture for this thing, uh, but, you know, I've got extras, so let's just do a bit of a torture test. And uh, I don't have any series resistor in that at all. Uh, it's just basically the bulb plugged into my breadboard directly across my uh, power supply. So what I want to do is crank up the voltage and see what this particular uh, tube or bulb fires up at. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's neon, but uh, I'm going to crank up the voltage here and see if we can see it come on. I'm going to turn off some lights here. Maybe make it a little bit easier to see. Alright, start cranking up the voltage. It's 10, there's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 volts, and I've maxed out at what this power supply can do. Alright, well, I kind of maxed out on what my normal bench power supply that I use for powering most things uh, can handle. Uh, that was about mm, 64 volts, just over 60 volts. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this were somewhere between 70 and 90 volts um, for it to fire. Uh, it's going to be significantly less than the Nixie tubes themselves, which I think was somewhere around 170. But, let me start cranking up on this thing. I know I can get at least to... Uh, that 60 mark. Yep. And that's right where we are. Hasn't fired. Keep going up slow. Yep. Oh, starting to get something there. Whoa. Hold on. I was right on the edge there. Ooh. Yeah, that maxes out the current on my power supply, and I don't like that uh, because this particular power supply is ancient. Uh, you know, it's from the 1950s, it's a Heath kit, so I, I don't want to blow this thing up. Let me put a limiting resistor in there, now I kind of have an idea of what voltage we're talking about, and uh, 
I know it kind of, well, how to protect this thing. We'll see. Hold on. Okay, so uh, I've put a resistor in there right here. Now, I think I've gone very conservative in value. It's 100K. Let's crank the power supply back up and see what we get here. We're at 50. Oh, starting. I want to get it to 200 volts. There we are, about 200. I want that 200 volts because that's what it's going to operate at uh, when I actually have it in the, the clock itself. And it looks like I might have the thing backward. Hold on. Nope, not backward. It was not meant to be viewed from the side. It is to, meant to be viewed from the front. Let me turn the lights on and see if the color gets a little bit more natural there. Yeah, see, it's starting to look a little bit more how I see it here. Um, kind of an orange glow. It's neon, again. Um, I'll try and without zapping myself here. That is a couple hundred volts. Got to be careful. Um, we're drawing, you know, just a couple milliamps. Um, it's certainly not a huge quantity. Uh, I could measure that and see what we're drawing with this uh, 100k resistor. I didn't bother measuring what the uh, current was. We'll get to that soon. Uh, I just want to try this other bulb out really quick and see what this one looks like. I'm going to go right back to where we were. Yep, there we go. There we go. This one is meant to be viewed from the side like that. And that's what, actually what I ordered. Um, that was my intent, was to be able to view it from the side like that. Because I, I just want all of the tubes to kind of stick uh, up like that. Uh, so this is ultimately probably the one I'm going to use. And uh, it's drawn about the same as the other. Well, no surprise. Uh, probably very similar firing voltages. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start characterizing what firing voltage these actually start to go off at. And uh, we'll start to measure the current that these things want to draw. Okay, let's see if we can get it all in shot. Here is our uh, bulb here. We're reading, well, nothing on the meter yet. Let me start to bring it up and see what voltage this thing fires off at. Going up. I suspect it's around 70 volts. If I remember right, neon bulbs were about 70 to 90 volts. It's probably similar. Getting close. There's our 70. Ah, 77 volts. Aha. Yep, that's about where I expected that to be. Let me bring that up to the uh, 200 volts. I think it does actually get a little brighter. Yeah, it seems to be. And there you go, 200 volts. Um, I kind of want to be a little bit torturous to this thing. I'm going to bring the voltage up higher. Man, 395 volts. I'm going to bring it back down. That makes me a little nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, let me do some voltage and current tests now. Well, I guess we did some voltage tests. Um, let's test the other bulb and see if that's similar. Okay. Got the other bulb in there. Let's bring this up. See what voltage this fires off at. I suspect it's going to probably be very similar to the other one. Probably right around that 70 to 80 volt mark. So I'm going to go pretty quick. Will it? Oh, this one's apparently higher. There it is, 90 volts. And even at 90 volts, it's quite dim. So I'll bring it up to 200. Yeah, this one just isn't quite as bright as the uh, as the other one is. Try and end on there, but still, yeah, you see, it's just really not that bright. Let me uh, do the same torture test. Oh, you know, maybe it was only kind of half firing there. 
because it just got a lot brighter when I brought it up. I'm going to keep going. Wow, okay, there you go, 397 volts. Being kind of mean to this thing. It's actually getting dimmer, I think, now. Did I make it too hot? I don't know. <laughs> All right, turn the voltage off. Uh, still a little bit of residual there. See, it jumps up like that. Wow, jumps all the way up to 70 volts. Well, let's let the bleeder resistors do their job. Hold on. Not going to touch that thing yet. I want to feel this resistor and see how hot it uh, has gotten. Sorry, you can hear my lab assistant barking. All right, 20 volts. I'm willing to do that. Yep, that's not hot at all. No, that's fine. Okay. Bulb didn't really get hot either. Um, let me get my meter set up for current and we'll measure the current running through this thing. Okay, I got lazy. I did not feel like moving the jacks to <laughs> measure current. I know, that's pretty lazy. Pretty bad, right? Anyway, um, so let's get the power supply running here. And, uh... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure right across this 100K resistor and we use Ohm's Law to figure out what the uh, the current through it is. So, you know, we know it's a particular resistance value. Once we figure out what the voltage is, we'll just plug that into the calculator and see what we get. So, let's uh, bring up the voltage here, bring it up to our... 200 volt mark on the power supply and let's see what kind of current we're getting. Gotta be careful, I don't want to zap myself. 150 volts across the resistor. Okay. Yeah, my power supply was reading a little high. Now we're at 200 volts. I measure the resistor again. There we go. 140 volts which leaves us 60 volts across our uh, indicator bulb. So let's punch that in. We've got... Hello, I can see me. Hi there. Uh, we'll go with 140 divided by 100 times 10 to the third. And we get a current of 1.4 milliamps. About what I would have expected. Uh, we'll just round up to one and a half, say, um, because then between the two bulbs it makes it a nice even three, which I like. Uh, so, you know, with about 2.5 milliamps times six tubes plus three, we've got about 18 milliamps this thing's going to draw on the 200 volt power supply. So anyway, admittedly, this was not that exciting of a video, just playing around with these bulbs here. Um, probably would have been more exciting if I somehow managed to zap myself with the power supply. I'm not going to do that though. Uh, I'm not crazy. Anyhow, uh, just wanted to make a short video to show you these bulbs that came in. The next one, I promise, will be more exciting. The next one is the 200 volt power supply. We'll go through designing that and uh, probably testing it. Though we'll probably split the two uh, videos up just so it doesn't run too long. Anyway, if you liked it, uh, click the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and follow me on Twitter at Ohms at Home. See ya.